While exploring ideas for a new video, I came across this site that had just been featured as site of the day on awards. And right from the start, one thing stood out, this landing page reveal animation. It opens with this incredibly choreographed preloader sequence that instantly caught my eye. The entire site is really well crafted, but this intro sequence in particular felt so thoughtfully designed, I knew I had to try recreating it. So I spent a few hours studying the flow, piecing together the sequence, and eventually built a working version of the timeline animation using just HTML, CSS, and GZAP. It's a near complete breakdown of the preloader reveal, including the progress bar, stacked image reveals, animated headline, and the final transition into the hero section. In this video, I'll walk you through how it all comes together and how you can build similar animation timelines using basic GSAP timeline instances to bring cinematic polish to your own landing pages. If you find this helpful, please make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. All right, let's jump into the code. First, I'll create a div with the class preloader. This is going to hold everything that appears on top of the page before the main content loads. Inside that, we'll need three elements, a progress bar, a group of preloader images, and a small line of copy text at the bottom. I'll start with the progress bar. This is just an empty div for now. We'll animate its scale later using GSAP. Next, for the preloader images, I'll paste four images, each one wrapped inside its own div with the class image. These are the images we'll animate in sequence as a part of the preloader reveal. Then, inside the div with the class preloader copy, I'll place a short paragraph with some dummy text. This is the small caption that shows up near the bottom of the preloader. Now, outside the main preloader overlay, I'll add another div with the class preloader header. Inside, I'll place a single anchor tag with the main text. Later on, we'll split this text into individual characters, animate the middle ones out, and keep the first and last letters as a part of the outro logo transition. Next, we'll need some placeholder content for the landing page itself, so I'll create a section with the class hero. Inside that, I'll add three header rows, each one has a div with the class divider and an h1 element right below it. This structure just makes it easier to animate the divider lines and the titles independently later on. Alright, that's all we need for the HTML structure. Now let's move on to the styling. First, I'm bringing in two fonts from Google Fonts. One will serve as our main typeface across the site, while the other will be used for the large stylized logo text in the preloader header. Next, I'm setting up a couple of color variables, one for light and one for dark. We'll use these throughout the layout to keep everything consistent. Then, I'll reset all the default spacing by removing margins and paddings and make sure every element uses border box sizing. For the overall layout, the body uses Mandrove as the main font with a white background to contrast nicely with the dark preloader. Images are set to always cover their containers that ensures they scale properly without stretching or distortion. Now for the headings, all H1s are uppercase, bold and tightly spaced to match that bold editorial aesthetic. And the paragraph elements are also uppercase, centered and slightly condensed, giving that small tagline look that fits well with the fashion style layouts. Anchor tags are styled to feel like a logo mark. They use a different font, all uppercase and appear in white over the dark preloader background. Next, I'll style the preloader itself. It's fixed to fill the entire viewport and uses a dark background. We'll animate its shape later using a clip part transition to reveal the main content underneath. Inside that, we have the progress bar sitting at the top. This starts at zero width and will animate across the screen as a part of the loading sequence. Then we have got the preloader images in the center of the screen. They are wrapped in a square container, positioned perfectly in the middle and hidden by default using a clip mask. Each image inside also starts zoomed in, so when the animation plays, they'll scale down smoothly, giving that cinematic parallax effect. Below the images, we have got the small caption section, 
that centered horizontally near the bottom of the preloader and styled in white text color for clear contrast. Now about the preloader, there is the preloader header. It's positioned right around the middle of the screen, perfectly centered both vertically and horizontally. This is where the large text sits and later on, we'll animate this using split text. Then comes the hero section, the main landing view. It's full height, aligns content toward the bottom and uses flexbox so all the headings and dividers stack neatly in place. Each row has a horizontal divider line above the title which will animate later to scale in from the center. The divider themselves start invisible, their scale will grow during the rebuild, creating a clean animation that complements the text and runs. Now, one last detail before we move on, there is a shared style applied to all text elements that we split using split text, whether it's characters or lines. That includes the characters inside the preloader header, the lines in the preloader caption, and the lines in the hero section. Each of these, the character and line elements, are styled as inline blocks with relative positioning and transform properties set up. This is what makes it possible to animate them smoothly with vertical offsets, stagger timing, and clip-like effects without breaking the flow of the layout. These styles don't affect the text visually on their own, they just prepare each character or line for animation later on using GSAP. Finally, a quick responsive adjustment. When viewed on smaller screens, everything scales down proportionally, including the preloader images and the header text, so the layout stays balanced on all devices. Alright, that takes care of the styling. Next, we'll move into the JavaScript and start firing up the preloader animations. First, I'm importing GSAP along with two plugins, split text, which will use to animate individual characters and lines of text, and custom ease, which lets us define our own easing curves for smoother motion. Then, I registered both plugins with GSAP so we can use them later in our timeline. Once the DOM is fully loaded, we are ready to start. The first thing I do is create a custom easing curve called Hop. We'll use this across most of our animations. It gives everything a stylized power motion that fits the overall vibe of this preloader. Next, I set up a small helper function called create split. It just takes in a selector, a type like characters or lines, and a class name. This wraps split text logic into a reusable method so we don't have to repeat ourselves later. Now let's actually use that function to split our text. First, I'll split the preloader header, that's the large logo text. We are splitting it into characters and each character will get the class character. Then I split the preloader caption, the small sentence near the bottom of the overlay, that one split into lines and each line will be assigned the class line. Finally, I split all the hero section headings, the three large H1s we placed inside the landing view. Those are also split line by line and will animate in later as a part of the reveal. After splitting everything, I store references to the characters from the header, the lines from the caption and the lines from the hero section. We'll be animating all of these separately in the timeline. I also grab the first and last characters from the preloader header. We'll need these for the outro where we animate just those two letters to the center and scale them down into the final logo. Next, I set up the initial position for every character in the preloader header. Each character gets pushed up or down vertically, alternating direction based on its index. This gives us that reveal bounce effect when they animate in later. Then I do the same for the caption lines and hero lines. They are all shifted downward, completely out of view, so we can animate them upward later on. Finally, I grab references to all preloader image wrappers and also the actual image tags inside each one. We'll animate both layers, the container and the images separately in the upcoming timeline. Alright, now that everything is set up, we can start building the main GSAP timeline. First, I'm creating a new timeline with a slight delay just to give the page a moment to settle before anything animates. Then we kick things off with the progress bar. We animate it from zero to full width, which acts as our loading indicator at the top of the screen. It stretches across smoothly using a power easing to keep it soft and gradual. Once the bar reaches full width, I flip its transform origin and then animate it back down to zero again. This creates a nice reverse motion that adds a bit of rhythm before the content starts reveling. Next, we move on to the preloader images. We loop through each one and animate their container masks from bottom to top, basically unfolding them vertically using a clip path animation. Each image animates in with a small delay between them, so they reveal one after the other like a timeline. At the same time, I animate the actual image tags inside those containers. Each image starts zoomed in and we scale them back to normal size during the same sequence. This adds a nice layered motion where the mask opens up and the image settles in place. 
Then we bring in the caption lines at the bottom of the preloader. Each line slides up from below using the custom hop easing and we stagger them slightly so they feel natural and flowing. This gives a nice build up toward the preloader header. After that, I animate in the preloader header characters, each one coming in from above or below based on its position. Again, we stagger them with a shorter delay to create that alternating letter by letter effect. Once everything is revealed, we start closing things down. First, I animate the entire image container back out, clipping it away from top to bottom like it's collapsing. Then we fade the caption lines upward of the screen using the same staggered hop motion in reverse which helps the exit feel connected to the entrance. That wraps up the initial reveal sequence. Next, we'll move into the logo transformation and the final preloader exit. First, we target all the characters in the preloader header but instead of bringing them in, this time we animate them out. For the first and last characters, we leave them where they are, we'll animate those differently in a moment. But for all the middle characters, we animate them off screen vertically, either moving them down or up based on their index. This creates that same alternating outro effect but now in reverse as if the logo is breaking apart from the center. We are doing this using a dynamic value where each character checks its position in the array and adjusts its y% percent accordingly. Now during this animation, we also trigger on start callback. This is where we prepare the two remaining characters, the first and the last for the logo transformation. Initially, we wrapped each character in a masking container using split text that was required for the vertical movement, similar to what we saw on the original site. But this time, we want to move them sideways without the mask. So inside the callback, we manually access the parent containers of the first and last characters and set their overflow to visible. This makes sure that when we shift the characters horizontally, they don't get clipped. Next, we calculate how far each of those two characters needs to move to align in the center of the screen. To do that, we first grab the width of the viewport, then we use get bounding client fract function to measure the current position of both characters on the screen. Once we know how far off center they are, we use the set to animate each one horizontally so they meet in the exact middle. And to keep the easing consistent with the rest of the animation, we apply the same custom hop easing to this transition as well. Once the two characters land in the center, we shift the entire preloader header into a new visual mode by changing its blend mode. We set the mix blend mode to difference. This makes the text visually invert depending on the background. In our case, it gives the logo a strong contrast as we transition into the light background of the hero section. Then we scale the whole header down and move it upward, almost like we are tucking it into place as the navbar. This is what gives us that final logo transition effect where the animation ends with a clean, minimized version of the brand centered on the screen at the top. Now that the logo is in place, we are ready to remove the rest of the preloader overlay. We do this by animating its clip path, transitioning from a full rectangle to a fully collapsed top edge. This creates a smooth upward vibe that reveals the landing page underneath. The timing here is important. We delay this transition slightly so it overlaps with the tail end of the logo collapse. This way, the sequence will seamless and connected. Finally, we animate the hero content. First, we bring in the heading lines. Each one animates upward from below using a soft easing curve. We stagger the lines slightly to add rhythm and focus so each one has its own moment as it enters. Then we animate the divider lines for each heading. They scale in horizontally from the center, giving the layout structure and a subtle sense of motion underneath the text. This completes the full reveal from the preloader sequence to the landing page headline. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.